Hi there and welcome to this uh, next video in the uh, sequence of YouTube videos that we're preparing. This one's related to the Sage 200 VAT return. Okay, so I'll just get the software up. So I'm just logged in here into a standard set of uh, demo data for um, Sage 200. Um, and the place that we do uh, in order to perform a VAT return is just from in the nominal ledger. So we go to nominal ledger, then it's in the period end routines, and then VAT analysis. Okay, so let's wait for that one to pop up. So there we go. So there we've got our current VAT return in there, so our current period totals. And you can see them are dating there, currently saying it's from, it's basically a, a three month period up to the 31st of March. Had I just been doing monthly, then when I've done the end of February, when it would have, all, we, we asked us for the date for the next VAT return, so then we would have put in the 31st of March. But what I'm actually doing is for a three month period. Okay, what the system actually does is it looks at that date and it then finds all transactions that have been entered in the system that are not that reconciled and are dated that date or earlier. So it will also include any that are in earlier months if you have uh, happened to have not claimed them at the point when you got to that month. Okay, so that's showing us our VAT figures. To actually get to the place that we actually do the period return, it's just within this next tab, the current period return tab. So we click onto that one. Okay, just to Brief note about the um, VAT return. Obviously, the one for the end of March uh, 2017 uh, is based on current legislation, which you would need to check at the time again. Uh, needs to be submitted by seven days into um, one calendar month after the VAT period end date. So the end of March one will be due something like the 7th of May. Uh, and in terms of that date, the funds also have to be cleared in HMRC's account. So the majority of people typically perform the VAT return and do the submission something round about the 20th of the month following. So in this case, it'd be the 20th of April for the return for the period of January through to March. Okay, so that's a bit of uh, background. But again, if, if there's any queries on that, you'd need to confirm that with your, uh, with your accountant or HMRC themselves. Okay, so now to move on to actually performing the VAT return. So we're going to the current period return there. Um, what I then do is say confirm my date's correct. If the date is incorrect, then I can actually amend this uh, from an option within the utilities called change period end return date. Okay, but it's not a, a standard thing. You normally would have set it correctly at the end of the previous VAT return. But if you didn't, you can go in and amend that um, and it'll allow you to choose any date in there. Okay, assuming that this is correct, so I've got the 31st of March. If I then want to interrogate the data that I've got in, so for instance, I've got like my box one, uh, I've got some sales and other outputs. I can just click on the basically the blue uh, blue high to text, and that'll then hyperlink me into the data. So I click that one. It then shows me that under sort of VAT code zero, I've got no goods, but under VAT code one, our standard VAT, I've got six thousand two hundred eighty pound uh, worth of uh, output um, net, and VAT wise, that incurs a liability of twelve hundred and fifty six pounds. Okay, so this then explains and shows you the transactions in this middle section that are making up that £1,256 VAT liability. Okay, so I can see I've got a transaction there for £150 plus VAT. Uh, our inverse number 5058 and our unique reference number in the audit trail of 27041. So we can then say look at those, I can scroll down and see those different transactions. If I had anything that was listed under a different heading with a different net value, then I could click there and it again would change that and show me those in the middle box. <coughs> okay, so I'll turn to that. I've got my um, tax code one. So I'm going to, and what, what, if, what if I wanted to, for instance, add in a VAT fuel scale charge in there? So what I'd do, I'd just click in uh, my adjustments box at the bottom here. This is where I make those adjustments. So I'm putting there and say the reason for it is um, fuel scale charge. Okay, and I'll say it's going to be £150 in this quarter. So we can see that uh, previously it was 12.56. I'm now adding 150 to that. So now when I click close within this uh, within this return area, uh, it's now updated that figure here. So instead of it being 12.56, it's now adjusted that to be 14.06. So basically just increased our liability. Okay, that's those uh, those transactions. So I've got 406. Then I've got VAT that I'm reclaiming in this period. Again, similar to the um, top one, I can click in there and I can see what transactions there is that are making up the uh, the amount of VAT that I'm reclaiming back. Okay, in this particular instance, you can see I've only I've got £406 worth of uh, output VAT, uh, but I'm claiming back £600. I'm actually getting a refund from HMRC in this month of £203.31. Okay, to then finalise this uh, this VAT return, 
Um, what I need to do, once, once I'm happy with all the figures and I've got everything that I need off there, I can then click Produce Fat Return. So this then runs through and just sort of, well, give me a warning to say, yep, I understand I can only do this once. What the actual this is going to do is it's going to flag those transactions in there uh, and post the VAT return into my system to say, yes, that I've uh, I produced this VAT return. Uh, and obviously the next period, so I was currently at the end of March, so I'm going to be the end of June, will be my next VATJ after that. So I put it on the 13th of June, that's that. Um, then I click to produce the VAT return. I can also, if I wanted to, uh, remove VAT transactions with a date earlier than, and I can specify what date I want to remove VAT transactions out of the system. I generally um, leave those in for at least uh, at least two years, um, and you may need, need to keep them longer um, in the system. So only if you're getting a detrimental effect and your system is running particularly slow, would you be, be needing to remove those VAT transactions off the system. Okay. I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to click Produce My VAT Return. Click there, it says, do you wish to produce the VAT Return now? Warning, basically saying that you'll not be able to reopen this VAT period once the VAT Return has been completed. So this is going to actually flag all of those transactions that we saw on the list as being now VAT reconciled. So I'll click Yes to that. So I'm just now running through uh, and performing my VAT return. Now, if I was actually configured, so there's basically the VAT Return, this one's saying there's nothing to be generated on there, so that's to do with EC stuff, so there's nothing on there. And there's my sort of summary um, of my VAT transactions. Okay, once I'm happy with that, just click close, or I can print those off and file, file them away, or I can spool them possibly uh, if required in the future. So then I just click close on the VAT bit. Okay. Uh, had I elected to do online submissions from my Sage software, so I'll just show you how you do that. Um, in order to do online submissions, what you do is from the nominal ledger in the utilities ledger setup, uh, ledger settings, we have an option for the, on the VAT submissions tab to say I would like to perform online VAT submissions. Okay, if you tick that box. Um, and then as you as I did the produce VAT return after it had calculated all the figures, it would then pop up on screen with the ability uh, for me to actually do pr submit those online. Okay, I can also do an online VAT payment as well. Uh, and what that's going to do is when I when I do the VAT return, it will post through. I then go through to my cash book and go to other transactions. Uh, and VAT return payment. Uh, and when I click on that, I'll actually do the submission for me. Uh, and post all the relevant relevant data to the correct. So it was obviously I have to choose the bank if, I, if I'd selected one there, and then the VAT liability account. So I need to find that on my uh, balance sheet. Okay, twenty six seven below. There's my VAT liability, and then I'd need to put in my credentials as well on there. I then click OK. Once I've saved those details away, um, when I actually performed the VAT return, so if I'll just click in it as I was going to do it again, when I clicked the current part return, click produce VAT return, it actually runs away in the background, finds those details, and then it pops up a, a submission box to allow me to actually electronically submit those details across to HMRC. As I say, I'm not, I've not got proper credentials, unfortunately, on my test data, so I don't have the ability to actually give you that, um, the actual one through with that. But if, I mean, I can just click the produce VAT return. Uh, I'll just need to put in end of September. Okay, so it says it hasn't been submitted until after the period end date. So it's obviously detecting that we're early in that period end date. So it's saying, you know, basically you can't produce that one currently. But if, if, if it was after that period end date, I could click produce that return and it would then take me in and ask me for my online credentials for HMRC to then produce it and do that all online. Currently what I have to do is either print it off and then go online and key in the numbers uh, or I would send it down in the post. And obviously at the same time arrange for a payment to go out. Um, after the event, I can actually get back and I can see my previous VAT return. So I can see all the ones that I've produced in the system uh, going, going backwards there. Okay, that concludes this uh, short video. Um, hopefully it's been helpful for you and will help you to um, successfully uh, get your VAT return submitted uh, and produced in the Sage 200 system. Thanks very much. Bye.